So you're sitting there one evening staring at your MIDI control surface with motorized faders thinking, wouldn't it be nice if the faders moved in, into position as you were changing tracks? Um, or if you were playing a MIDI item on a currently selected track that the CCs within that item should follow on the control surface. Uh, if you're using Reaper, I'm going to show you how to do that. So that um, changing tracks will jump the faders into the, the last seen position of the MIDI CCs on that track. Or if you're playing a MIDI item, the faders will follow the CCs in the MIDI item. Okay, let's start with a clean slate. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to repack.com, if you haven't already, and install the repack extension. Uh, once you do that, go to manage repositories, and you're going to import um, my repository for Reaper scripts right now, it just includes this one. Eventually I'll add some of my uh, custom scripts to this repository. This link is in the description field. You can just paste it in. Uh, open the tax script section and then under uh, install update tax scripts, just install all. Um, so the way this works is there's a Lua script that comes with the repository called sync media CCs on track select. Um, this needs to be run on startup, you can do that using the SWS extension. There's a startup action that you can use. Uh, we're just gonna run that manually for now. Now there's a companion JSFX that you need to install on each um, track that you whose CCs you wanna sync. So let's set up a, a track monitor, monitor for, for MIDI input. input. And on this track, we'll install the CC sync FX. Now there's an option here for MIDI bus number. We're gonna ignore that for now and then duplicate the track. Uh, I want to automatic record arm on track select. All right, so um, once you have that set up, the other piece um, of configuration work to do is under the MIDI devices section, uh, configure your control service. I'm just gonna set mine uh, for input and output and the trick is on the midi device that you want to send the cc's out when the track is to be synced um, you need to add this track output um, text to the alias and that tells the lua script that uh, this is the midi device that should be engaged when the track is selected so let me show you how that works so notice when I selected the track, it added as a MIDI output device the um, item that I, the, the MIDI device that I had added the track output to. And the way this works is as soon as I select a track, it's going to remove that from the previous track and add it to the newly selected track. So at any given moment, only one track will be armed, for lack of a better term, for MIDI output to the selected MIDI device. And so when you um, set a CC, it will automatically sync on track select. Now it only will sync the CCs that it's observed input on. So it's not actually touching any of the other CCs. It's not gonna initialize them to zero, but if you wanted to set them, as soon as you actually send a CC event through the CC sync JSFX, it remembers it. So now they are synced. Now one trick is um, in order for the CC events that are being emitted by the, this JSFX on track select, um, they have to make it through to the MIDI output. So if you have a, a VST, like let's say a contact instance in the middle, let's add it to the second track here. By default, the contact instance is actually blocking or absorbing the MIDI events and it's not letting them through. So um, with this configuration, you would have to 
configure the MIDI bus to merge on the contact instance. Let's do that on the second one. Merges with MIDI bus, and now they'll sync because Reaper is merging the output of the CC Sync Jazz FX with the output of the contact instance, and it's making its way to the through to the MIDI MIDI output. Um, so, I mean, th that's the, the gist of it, uh, but it's not the most ideal configuration. Um, the first problem is that actually not all uh, VSTs I've noticed actually play well with the merge um, merge output. There has been there have been some bugs that I've run into where this actually uh, breaks the FX, and this can't be used in all cases. Um, so. I'm going to show you now a slightly more sophisticated uh, version. When I say slightly, it's actually significantly more sophisticated version of this setup, which also allows using multiple MIDI channels. Um, the way my control service is configured right now for the purposes of this demo is that each of these faders is set to MIDI channel one. So if I wanted to work in multiple MIDI channels, I would have to... Um, you know, reconfigure my control service. It doesn't provide an easy means of changing MIDI channels on the faders when it's configured in this custom mode. Some control services might be more um, flexible in that regard. This one isn't. So, uh, so let's see an alternative configuration. Okay, here's a quick sketch showing how I have things set up. Um, as you can see, the Bohm MIDI Translator Pro is at the heart of my MIDI workflow. It's essentially a sort of a giant MIDI router. Uh, everything um, that sends MIDI is routed through the MIDI translator. So nothing actually talks directly to the DAW. It all goes through uh, MIDI translator. And this lets me do some pretty cool tricks. So um, the control surface and the MIDI keyboard are both sending MIDI events on channel 16. Channel 16 is just what I picked to be my sort of variable MIDI channel. Anything that gets sent to BMT, uh, Boom MIDI Translator, um, on channel 16 is redirected when it goes out to Reaper. So the control surface has buttons to set the global MIDI channel. And I use these buttons here, um, these little record buttons down here. These actually set the active global MIDI channel. So basically when I set to channel one and I, you know, move a slider or uh, play something on the keyboard, it gets redirected to Reaper as MIDI channel one, and now ditto, except it would go to MIDI channel two, MIDI channel three, and so on. So that's just how I, I can use multiple MIDI channels without having to reconfigure anything. It's very quick. It just this sets the context of MIDI events that are leaving the, um, the MIDI controllers once it's set. Um, and so uh, the control surface is what actually sets the global MIDI channel. Any of the CCs that I uh, that I send from that point, the the control surface, which is configured in custom mode, all the faders output on channel 16. And so the uh, Bow MIDI translator will take care of taking those events and outputting them to uh, Reaper and anything else it wants to listen on the global MIDI channel. Um, and so. Right now, as I'm sending these sliders, since I'm in channel one, um, the control surface is outputting channel 16, BMT is redirecting to Reaper on channel one. So Reaper and anything you know downstream, so all these effects, will see the events coming in on um, channel one. Let's do um, a quick look at the control panel just to prove it. So uh, here I'm sending the mod wheel showing on channel one, and if I set it to channel two, um, now they're coming in on channel two. Sorry, it's really cumbersome. I got a tripod right in the middle of uh, the control surface, so I think I might have bumped it a couple times. Sorry about that. So let's go back to the um, the diagram. Okay, so Reaper gets the events on the global MIDI channel. Now when um, I use the CC sync uh, script that um, that I showed earlier, when I select a channel, that actually outputs on the MIDI channel that those CCs were observed. So I sent a bunch of CCs a moment ago on CC1. Those would get sent back to BMT on one of the virtual um, MIDI 
interfaces, MIDI devices on the appropriate channel. On whatever channel they were recorded, they go back out on. So if I was set to channel four and recorded a bunch of MIDI events, uh, CC events, they'd go back out on channel four, back into BMT on the whatever channel they were recorded in. And then BMT will make a decision about when it receives those events. And it will filter events that come in on whatever channel and see if they're coming in on the global MIDI channel. If they're not, then it ignores them. But if they are, then it will send them back out to both the control surface and my MIDI keyboard on the on channel 16. So at the end of the day, the control surface sends out on channel 16, gets messages back in on channel 16, and that's just the context is switched based on um, the global MIDI channel. Uh, similarly, on the MIDI keyboard, my controller is um, a complete control S88, and it has configurable encoders, so those can be set as well. So, um, you know, if I have like a portamento uh, en encoder or something like that on the keyboard, that would get synchronized when I when I select the select the track on Reaper. So that's um, you know at a ten thousand foot view how that's working. Let's um, take a look at BMT and show you what I mean. Um, so this is horribly complex. Uh, you can ignore pretty much everything. The, the relevant piece here is this rule that's selected. And uh, we're going to take a look at how to configure um, the CC Sync JSFX now to output on a different MIDI bus. So previously, we were sending out on bus zero, uh, which would just send out to the a track output MIDI device that we defined standard MIDI CC events. Whenever you set uh, the MIDI bus to a non-zero bus, um, like bu MIDI bus two or, or, or three or so on, this goes up to, sorry, z value zero is bus one, value one is bus two, et cetera. It's sort of start by zero. So value 15 is bus 16. Yes. Count, start, count starts at zero. All right, um, let's, configure this project. This is the project that I started with in the demo, except I've removed any of the the um, CC sync stuff. So let's add the JSFX, move it to the top. It's got to be at the front of the chain, and then set the MIDI bus number to, we're going to set it to value 15, which is bus 16. Um, and we're just going to copy this JSFX to the front of all the remaining tracks. So um, so now I should be able to set a few values here and then go back and they get synced. Um, and that is being done by BMT. It gets the, the uh, events that come in on um, a, uh, a, a virtual device that I've aliased to jaw, DAW general in and the MIDI event is a sysx, and it looks like that. So you could just copy that direct if you want. But the the variable pieces are this is this piece here is fixed. Zero F is the MIDI bus, so zero F is uh, bus fifteen, or sorry, bus sixteen. Um, but zero F is again count count starts at zero, and then PPQQRR. This is just the the normal MIDI CC event that um, would have been sent if this was on bus zero and F, uh, the sysx message is terminated by F7. So again, you can just kind of copy that directly. And then I, I do some de decision points here in the, in the rule. Again, this is based on what I described earlier to decide if I'm going to filter the event uh, or not, and then update the MIDI channel to channel 16. Um, and then output it to my uh, keyboard and my control surface. So again, this is just the implementation of the, the diagram that I showed earlier. But what this allows me to do is um, I don't have to worry about making sure that any of the FX downstream of the CC Sync JSFX are merging with the MIDI output bus because it's outputting on a different MIDI bus. So um, I sidestep that entire problem. And then also it lets me set multiple MIDI channels. So here's an example if I pull up this patch. Um, all of this stuff so far is set to MIDI channel one. Um, but if I wanted to, let's say I'm you know doing a line and I find I want to layer something, so I pull in um, another patch, set it to channel two, I can jump to channel two real quick and play in the line now on channel two. 
Now, it remembers the mini events, the CC events on the channel two. So if I jump back to channel one, it syncs to channel one. And now this lets me jump back between channel one and channel two on the same track. Uh, and my in my workflow, I just generally use only up to four channels, but obviously this could scale up to, well, up to 15 channels because channel 16 is reserved for the global channel. So um, hopefully that made uh, even remotely uh, a tiny bit of sense. Um, and hopefully this is useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.